Hi, I'm Emily. I'm Emily of Two Girl Angel. And I'm doing a video now from a, a different perspective. Um, actually, I'm filming from my, my couch that I just bought recently. It's a love seat. I have a couch and a love seat. And uh, I did some rearranging in my house. I uh, got rid of my old computer desk where I used to do my videos um, to make room for the couch and love seat. So uh, it kind of makes the room more friendly towards uh, having guests over. And uh, I think it makes me feel more at ease in doing videos and uh, allows me to kind of um, be more homey. Um, I want to um, express that although I have slowed down in doing my videos, I am still continuing to do videos. I I find that making a video and talking about things that are important to me um, helps. Um, and I think that we all can use some form of uh, therapy, whether we reinforce um, our good thoughts through just speaking to ourselves or we just go into a room and listen to calming music or we talk out our thoughts in a video format and for me I've always wanted to kind of feel like I could um, be an artist and do work on a stage and get around uh, utilizing my knowledge, my experience, and share that with people. I think uh, it's important, you know, for me, I feel I have a lot to share with people. I think uh, we all have things that we feel is best left secret but we also have things that we want to share, we want to talk about. And to be honest with you, a lot of you probably wonder why I'm so open now about being um, transgender, about coming out as male to female, and kind of living uh, in the open and not feeling any shame. Um, I The truth of the matter is I lived in fear all my life. Um, I didn't transition um, until my early 50s. So I went basically my whole life hiding and living in the closet. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be true to who I am in at the same time, delicately balance my family life. Uh, you know, I, I have a family, I have a son, um, I have a wife who we don't have the best relationship and I don't know where that's gonna wind up eventually. I have no idea, but I truly care about my family and um, although it's not a perfect match, I'm trying to make the best of it. Um, I feel like uh, there's a lot of um, misunderstanding with uh, people trying to deal with someone who's transgender. I know it from personal experience. Uh, I live with it every day. I, I feel like people don't accept me. They don't understand me. Even family. My 
my immediate family, my sisters don't accept me, my uh, wife doesn't accept me, my in-laws for the most part don't understand and are having a hard time accepting me, though they're being cordial. Um, my son is a work in progress, um, and I will try to work with him in best accepting the fact that I can't be the father that I used to be wearing suits and ties and, you know, being masculine because that really wasn't who I was. And to portray something that's not true or real is not beneficial to him or myself. And so, although to some or most people, um, they look at me as being somewhat selfish, when in reality, all I'm trying to do is find my peace and happiness. And I don't view it as the way they do, because I'm not selfish, you know? I mean, I want to live my life the way I feel comfortable and happy. And for me, living as a woman is how I've always felt. And I can't change that. I've been living in the closet since the age of three. That's when I knew in my heart that I was different. And I knew when I was first drawn to women's girls clothes and women's fashions in the years uh, as a teen and a young adult that I couldn't change the way I felt. It was just that. It was who I was. It was something that was within me and there was nothing I could do. You know, I tried many times to stop. I tried to um, stop by purging my clothes. You know, um, initially I started out wearing my younger sister's clothes, her dress, and uh, some of her underwear. And then um, as the years went gotten by, I started wearing my mother's clothes. Uh, I used to wear her dresses, her shoes, and uh, underwear. And um, then when I started working, I was able to buy my own feminine clothing, dresses. I preferred dresses, though in the beginning I only bought things that I could wear in public that I felt comfortable. Obviously, I wasn't out yet uh, for a long time, even in my adulthood. Uh, like I said, I only transitioned uh, four years ago at the age of 51. But um, when I was in my 20s, my 30s, and my 40s, I was uh, living in the closet. And when I went out, all I would do was I would drive to the mall and basically just wear a pair of girls' jeans and a blouse. Um, and that's what I would do. I would walk around the mall for a little bit, not long. Um, so I was always wearing jeans. And then when I finally got the nerve to uh, take more risks, I would kind of wear a wig and wear a dress with a coat. Uh, I remember doing that one time in the winter when I actually needed to wear a coat. And um, it was a good experience, but it was very scary for me, especially because I didn't pass well enough, um, I was kind of found out, um, you know, people would, I mean, it might have been my imagination, but I remember hearing girls laughing at me, I remember seeing some guys pointing at me, so in my uh, effort in coming out, it was not a good experience initially because I felt I was being uh, watched 
And if you're not comfortable with your presentation, uh, you're not going to be comfortable going out in public. Um, as I realized that I couldn't go on further in my male existence, I realized that I couldn't uh, live that way anymore. I came to the conclusion that I had to transition. I did soul searching, I went for therapy, and after a while I just came to realize that I had to transition. It was do or die, and it was in the wake of my father's tragic suicide and my best friend's premature death. And uh, after going to my friend's wake, I realized that there was nothing else for me in life other than my son and family. Um, but, uh, you know, I worked hard. I had my career. I studied in college. And I felt that losing my father and then my best friend, that um, I had to make some changes. And that's when I came to the conclusion that I was, uh, well, I always knew that I was trans. I was, in my heart, a woman all from the beginning of time. I knew from the age of three that I was a girl, that I was different. And um, I just identified that way, you know? I couldn't change that, uh, no matter how hard I tried. But um, when I finally realized that I had to transition, I started to research the things that you need to do to transition. So I went on the internet, and the first thing I wanted to do was to try to feminize my body, my looks. So I remember I used to go to the store to buy those supplements like estrogen um, for women who are menopausal. Um, they are like uh, plant types of estradiol, uh, pl like a plant for estrogen. But um, I didn't feel any change in using them. I, I bought them for at least a year and a half. And I was taking them, estrogen. And then I started uh, researching on actual hormones. And I came upon a website for um, obtaining female hormones. And that's when I started uh, ordering uh, female hormones on the internet. And um, I remember that uh, Premarin was the very first form of estrogen that I took um, and it came in a pill and I followed the instructions. It was not prescribed, I was self-medicating, which I don't uh, condone, um, though I, I did it myself personally. And I certainly can understand why a, a male to female transgender girl would probably do that because I felt that I wanted to um, transition and I wanted to do all that I needed to to feminize my body. And uh, then I um, went on the website uh, for support, I came upon a website for cross-dressers and also transsexuals. And I, I saw a thread that was uh, helpful to me because it pointed me in the direction of uh, a facility that I could go to. Someone had recommended Callan Ward in the city, New York. Um, and they said it was a great place for the LGBT community. Uh, 
including the transgender community. Uh, so I made an appointment to see a doctor and uh, I remember my very first visit there. I went in a suit and tie, but underneath I had a dress and that, that's how I usually dress. I used to wear dresses underneath my male attire. So I figured since I was going to go see the doctor, um, I wanted her to know my situation and uh, I assumed that I was going to see a female, but I wasn't sure. But uh, it turned out that I did have a woman doctor and when she did my vitals, she wanted to check my heartbeat and all that and that's when I had to dress down and that's when she saw I was wearing a dress because I remember the very first question she asked me was why I was there and I said that I wanted to transition from male to female and she looked at me curiously and said you want to become a woman and I said well I identify as a woman and I, I feel much happier as a woman um, and I know that's what I am in my heart and she said uh, well when she saw me with my dress on, she realized that I was for real and she took me seriously. And what she told me on my very first visit was that, because I also told her I was self-medicating and she said, you sh really shouldn't, but you know, that's your decision. But she said, if you can prove to me that you're worthy of transitioning then I will put you on HRT in three months and that was back in uh, March of 2012 when I first went to the the Callum Lord Community Health Center and I met my doctor and true to her word in three months after visiting with her on uh, several occasions, she realized that I was for real and she put me on uh, HRT, the uh, estradiol, uh, which I take two milligrams three times a day, and the spironolactone, which I take 100 milligrams twice a day. And she said to follow the instructions and she said, you have to be monitored regularly for your blood. And uh, she had me sign all these papers for my informed consent. Uh, and then she wrote my script. And I've been taking the hormones now since June of 2012. And uh, I've been taking them religiously. I might have missed here and there a little when my prescription ran out but um, for the most part I've been continuously taking the estrogi estradiol and the spironolactone and I feel much happier I'm very feminine in my ways I've always been feminine and I noticed that being on the hormones has helped me tremendously in my transition, I am much more content. I'm very um, aware of things. Uh, I noticed that my facial features have become much more in line with a female. My skin has softened amazingly. Uh, my hair has grown significantly. I'm happy with my breast development. Um, I feel like uh, I'm very comfortable. You know, I have uh, uh, pride in having uh, the uh, feminine development. I have curves here. I'm developing hips. My hair growth on my legs is not as 
bad as it used to be. It's slowed down tremendously. Um, the only thing that um, I have to work on is my voice. Uh, because the hormones don't change the voice from male to female transgenders. Um, basically, you have to retrain your voice to sound more feminine. And that takes time and practice. Um, but if I talk soft, I think it will help me. Um, because I'm very soft-spoken to begin with. I also find that I'm much more emotional. I've always been emotional and sensitive and caring and empathetic. So those qualities haven't really changed. But I, I do cry. And I, the reality was I always cried. So I don't find such a significant change in my emotions. And I, I don't feel like that I get the uh, bitchy or whatever they say I don't feel like that because I know some male to female say they get moody and bitchy and I never really experienced that um, I don't think I would want to anyway uh, I just feel good about myself and comfortable as a woman a transgender woman and um, I can't change who I am, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, it takes time to uh, find out and soul searching and, you know, and uh, you have to really dig deep. And sometimes life circumstances happen and you develop uh, uh, feelings and ideas and insights into your life that are affected based on these happenings. Um, I knew from day one that I was different. Um, and I knew eventually I would have to do something about it. But uh, it wasn't going to stop me. It wasn't going to stop me from being me. Um, I was going to always be this way. And I was going to be the best that I could be. You know? And uh, you only live life once. So you may as well find your happiness, you know? And for me, being happy means being uh, a woman. And I'll never change that. Because that's who I am. And that's what I'll always be. And um, if I can say one thing that may help those who are grappling with possibly uh, transitioning, whether you're male to female or female to male, that... Um, the one thing you have to realize is that you're not alone. That your feelings are probably real. Um, that you should go with your instincts. Uh, you should not be ashamed of who you are. And if you feel that this is the time, you have to try to gain the strength because a lot of things will change and you have to be prepared for that. You risk losing a lot. You risk losing your family, your friends, your employment. You may go into a deep depression. You may consider suicide. You know, it's not all Roses, there's a lot of repercussions when you do make that decision. So you have to be ready for all that can happen. 
and you just have to do your best to live under those circumstances and if you're willing to take the risk and feel that this is the right thing for you then you have to do it and you need to get the support you need to see therapists you need to see a psychiatrist you need to have a doctor who can prescribe you the medications and you need to follow up and the most important thing is you need to take care of yourself and love yourself and that's what I have to say because loving yourself is the most important thing and if you're unhappy with who you are, then you need to change. And that's what I had to do. I needed to change my life. And I needed to become Emily. And I'm happy now. When I have my son, he's my most important thing in my life. I also need to be me. And I'm happy. I love you guys. Emily signing off. <laughs>